Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to dip back in on the insanity that is the comic book industry, the mainstream comic book industry, current year. Okay. And everything has just gone to hell in a handbasket over the last couple of weeks. And I think I think we can pinpoint uh, as to when this, this started happening. And it, it does have to do with that Whisper Network in my opinion. Uh, before we do that, we're doing a mini, mini crowdfunder for a Clownfish TV enamel pin. Check it out on shopclownfish.com. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, when they're gone, they're gone. Yep. That's it. That is it. So, all right. We've been talking more about comics than we have in, in a while. Yeah. Because there's so much bullshit going on in the mm -hmm. industry right now. And uh, social media, Twitter, especially like I don't even I don't even pay attention to what's going on because it's just it's it's awful, uh, absolutely awful. And we've got pros losing their shit over Comicsgate again, like it's 2017 all over again. Uh, and we've got you know a lot of back and forth there. But now we've got all kinds of media hit pieces coming out and all that. What I think is going on? Armchair observation. Now disclaimer: We are not Comicsgate. Nope. Uh, we don't want to have any kind of label associated with uh, any kind of group that may do something that we don't agree with. I mean, I'd rather everybody just kind of deal with individual creators on a case-by-case -case basis. You know, I don't want to be responsible for something that somebody else says or does that I don't agree with. Um, that being said, the overall sentiment that the comic book industry is in shambles right now, and there are some truly, truly awful people working yep. in the comic book industry. Yep. And there are there's gatekeeping. Yep. I, I can absolutely get on board with that because that has been our personal experience. Uh, it's been our you know shared experience talking to other creators uh, in comics or former creators. The industry is a very catty, catty yeah, place. Yeah, and to it be. does. And the whole idea that there is you know this idea of forced diversity being inserted into these comics, I would agree with as well because they're changing characters and making them you know diverse or give you know for no reason other than to be like well you know that's a problem because they're male that's a problem because they're straight you know there's no other reason to change it and it's, it's actually even more insulting to people that aren't are not the way these characters are because it's like you're basically saying you can't carry it you're the people like you cannot carry a character by yourself we have to appropriate other characters uh because we don't believe that um someone like you can carry a whole story and that's even actually even more insulting when you think about it it, it is i mean this is the thing too this is what they keep saying they keep saying the issue is diversity i would say the issue is actually the comic book industry being the way that it always has been behind closed doors having the uh having all that come out in public because of social media and and showing how the industry that that's now shrunk um is basically a a middle school lunch table you know, and you have to be the right kind of person. Well, I think it would show lack of talent to me because if yeah. you can't write a character unless they're like you, then yeah. that just means you're not a very good writer. So back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, they actually created uh, new diverse characters. They had quite a few of them and they actually marketed those characters. Uh, they weren't just hand-me-downs right. from other- Right, that's what it feels like, hand-me-downs. And everybody, they keep pointing to like X-Men. They're like, oh, well, the X-Men, you know, they had a very diverse team and they reboot. I'm like, yeah, with all new characters. They didn't just turn the original five X-Men into stand-in characters. Well, let's make a clarify, clarification here. All new good characters. They, you know, they weren't calling them Safe Space and Snowflake. Oh my God. And what was Hot Topic Junior? I don't remember. Oh, uh, be negative. And, be negative. And, Hordak Junior. And Internet Gas or whatever that was. I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, you know, they weren't naming it Safe Space, Safe Space and Snowflake. But anyway, what is causing all the friction, in my opinion, is the fact that the comic book industry is dying and there's not gonna be much room for, well, there's not gonna be enough room for all the creators currently working in comics. A lot of people aren't gonna make the transition to whatever is next in comics. So they're freaking the hell out and they're attacking Comicsgate because Comicsgate has been successful outside the mainstream. Now they will say it's because they're fighting for diversity and yada, yada, yada. But there's something that happened in the last couple of weeks that escalated the attacks and the conflict and that would be this uh whisper network mm -hmm. that was outed because one of the the points of contention for comics gate and even for people that aren't comics gate that are just comics youtubers uh you know like ourselves are just commenting on the situation uh here and there is that uh there's always been this feeling that there was some kind of collusion within mm -hmm. the entire comic book industry to keep certain people out of it 
to ruin careers too. Cause it seemed like clockwork. You always had creators yeah. talking about the same things at the same times. All the uh, all the media outlets would start right? talking about the same Which thing. Which we pointed out many, many times before we even knew about this, that, that it came out for real. Right, like we knew everybody was too chummy. It's too small of an industry. Everybody knows everybody, right? But now there's basically proof that at least one Whisper Network does exist. It It does have members that include comic book editors, comic book creators, comic book journalists, and they do discuss the possibility of, of destroying people's careers. Apparently, yeah. Op openly, apparently, allegedly, maybe I'm not part of it. I'm not a woman in comics, but that's just one group. I know back channel, there are rumors of uh, comics journalists having, uh, you know, Slack channels. This happened with, um, you know, with gaming journalists too. They had Slack channels and they were discussing and it all basically coordinate. You know, so we're gonna have the same kinds of articles on five or six different media outlets to make it look like the entire industry is outraged. Right, yeah, so it looks, it gives it more validity. If everybody does it at once, we were gonna say, oh, it must be a real problem because they're all covering it. You Everybody's know? covering it just all at once. But this it's a is a real problem. It's a manipulation tactic for control. It's like, it's all a, a fight for control. That's what this is. And, Hold the shit. And, you know, things were kind of quiet for a while. Like, you know, the Comics Gate, that situation kind of peaked in like 2017, 2018. Uh, they kind of went their way and they basically started selling comics to, uh, to their YouTube audience. The mainstream just kept digging itself a deeper hole. Right. Not doing that well in crowdfunding. And, you know, it seemed like things had calmed down. But then as soon as this West Whisper Network thing happened, a week or two ago, when this this broke, all hell has broken loose. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had, you know, Tom King. Now again, it seems like they hold these cards to play them at the right time. Uh, everybody knew Jay Lee was doing cyber frog covers for months. Right. Nobody said anything about it until after the Whisper Network got outed. Uh, everybody knew that Dynamite was working with Comicsgate. Nobody said anything about it until after the Whisper Network right. got outed. So this, to me, looks like, and they're like- Deflection. Four, deflection. There's four or 500 people working, and they're, you know, again, we're talking editors, creators, journalists, just in that one group. We don't know how many more pockets like this there are. Oh, I'm sure there's more. And they're all freaking the hell out because it's like, ah, oh, shit. Everything that YouTubers have been saying, that there's collusion behind the scenes, that the comic book industry is gate kept, it's all true. There's proof that it's true. Mm -hmm. And they're all freaking out and they're playing these cards now. That's the only thing I can think of because a lot of this stuff that they're, you know, these surprises have been common knowledge for years. Right. But now we play the card. Now we write the hit pieces. Um, you know, one of the targets of the Whisper Network was actually DC writer Scott Snyder. And he's going to be less involved at DC now. Oh, surprise. And they were talking about trying to get him canceled in the Whisper Network, you know, and now he's on his own. He's gonna be less involved. He'll probably do better. He probably will do better, but what I'm saying is like, he knew he was gonna be canceled or they tried canceling him, you know, some other way, or he's just like, I'm not, I'm just not doing this. A lot, I, of, people, a lot of people just don't, okay, here's the thing I noticed too. A lot of people just are like, the whole thing's stupid and I hate it and I just don't wanna be involved. Mm -hmm. And because you don't wanna take a side, because you might have friends on both sides and you're just like, honestly, I'm just doing my job. I'm not gonna give an opinion. You get canceled because you refuse to give an opinion saying that you side with uh, the Whisper Network side. Well, Scott Snyder, they were putting pressure on him before because he wasn't giving his formal denouncement of Comicsgate fast enough. And this, this whole thing feels like a communist regime. Like you have to publicly denounce Comicsgate, which everybody has known has been a thing for a while. Uh, you have to do it now, even though really nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is the comic book industry is dying. They're taking out PPP loans to keep these publishers afloat. Meanwhile, there are people over in Comicsgate making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and they can't stand it. Because yeah, they can't. I'm sure their bosses are probably asking them why individuals on YouTube are making that kind of money. Right, and the thing is, you know, here's the thing too. They they drove them out and said, go, fine, you're, we're kicking you out. You go do it yourself. You know, you can't do it without us. Then they did it without them and they're mad because they did it without them and they can't control that. So they tried to insert their gatekeepers and crowdfunding and that blew up and didn't work and they just can't stand it. Yeah, Kickstarter kicked uh, Camilla Zhang out. They kicked her out on her ass because the numbers were down 
And, uh, you know, they put a nice spin on it. But the reality is, if she was bringing it, she would have been one of the ones they kept. Right. And Kickstarter has to be looking at this like, all these people are going to Indiegogo now because, you know, Kickstarter has been gatekeeping people. And so it's all blown up. What was supposed to happen? This is why they're so mad. What was supposed to happen was you were supposed to go your own way, but you were supposed to go die penniless in a ditch without them. Right, right. This is like when somebody dumps somebody. Well, you'll be sorry. I'm the best you've ever had. And and they 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 leave and they wind up with a much hotter spouse and a lot more money. And you were supposed to go die in a ditch. Right. And then the other person stalks you and acts like a crazy stalker. Or like if you're a partner to somebody and then, you know, they got rid of you and then you went and went further and farther and better than anything they ever did. And then they try to stalk you online and, you know, steal your name and do shitty things like that because they can't stand it that you did better than them. Because in their mind, they had the power and they had the power to cancel you. Well, you, you know, fine, go do your own thing. You'll be sorry. And it's like, meanwhile, they're making. Well, they honestly believe too that that you're only big because of them. Yeah. That you that you only someone only wants you because of them. That you only made it somewhere because of them. And at the end of the day, they're not what they thought they were. Yeah, they don't have the power. So now what they're trying to do, since they don't have the power to control the the comics gate economy, they're going out of their way, in my opinion to destroy it from the outside, because I think now that the Whisper Network thing has gotten out, I have to wonder if the corporate overlords aren't kind of looking at this like, what the hell's going on? When if they're not, if it, is there potentially, possibly, maybe, could be some uh, screenshots of things that could get people in trouble with some of the lawsuits going on uh, involving, you know, trying to get people's deals canceled and things like that. So there might be some legal ramifications in this too. Oh, maybe, maybe I absolutely. Possibly. Yeah, I absolutely. I mean, if those screenshots are legitimate, there's potential lawsuit material because mm -hmm. you're showing that you're going out of your way to collude with other individuals to get certain individuals kicked out of uh, the comic book and industry. And if there are in fact lists of who not to hire, that's discrimination. There could be lawsuits that could possibly happen because of that as well. So this, they're, they're, they're playing with fire on this one. Okay. So we're, we're going to go through, there is a lot to talk about here. So now, okay, so that's on, on one side of it. We've got Denounce Comics Gate. And there's some more. I'm going to pull up some tweets and stuff. And they're trying to pull in some bigger people, some Hollywood people into it too. Like anybody cares about Hollywood anymore. Yeah, right. Uh, denounce Comics Gate, everybody quick. Tell everybody it's a they're, hate not like they're doing anything else over there. Yeah, right. It's like, yeah, everybody's, you know, in lockdown right now. They're But, but you know, one of the biggest things with... um with Comicsgate was the ridiculous amount of money they were making on crowdfunding. Now, we remember a time when the comic book industry collectively laughed at anyone who used Kickstarter, or yep. used web comics, or, mm -hmm. or, or did any kind of an end run around the mainstream comic book industry. So now, here comes Bleeding Cool yesterday with you know a pretty solid article talking about people who have been successful in crowdfunding. What they're not mentioning uh, at all is that the most successful crowdfunding campaigns have been completely omitted uh -huh. from this. This is just people using Kickstarter and people that they approve of. Right. Uh, so I'm like, Girl Genius, okay, well, first thing about Girl Genius, Girl Genius was around for a long, long, long time. And honestly, I'm surprised they only made that much money. They've been around for years as a webcomic. Years. They have an audience because they, that's why. It's nothing, it's not because they're related to the, the comic industry so much as it is they had a webcomic. Uh, yeah, the folios, they had, um, they, they had an in already with the D&D crowd because he used to do the, the Dungeons and right. Dragons comics. So they had a huge following already. But I'm sorry, 150,000 is not that much. But they always do really well on their Kickstarters because they have a huge following that they developed outside of the comic book industry. Yeah, and they actually- An amateur hour. It's so funny because they don't, really exist in the comic book ecosystem at all like they're you know not writing i don't think they're writing comics for other publishers or anything they're just kind of off to the side doing their own thing um and it's it's been successful for them it's been sustainable yeah you know? for years i mean that, that's for again that, that's like that, that that's apples and oranges but now they want to claim it all these people that they were like oh my god it's amateur hour comic book amateur hour now they want to claim it because they want to use it against comics gate uh iron circus Spike Trotman. Smut Puddler. It, well, th there's a couple porn. things here. Porn. <laughs> um, they were doing the um, Lackadaisy. They were doing the Lackadaisy Cats too, weren't they? Yeah, and they did like 300 and something. Here's the thing about that, though. Lackadaisy Cats is one of the early webcomics that's been around for years. Again, had an established audience that had been around back when there was very little competition. But there's one problem with them was their stuff's really pretty, but they hardly ever posted. 
Um, but you know, this was Smut Peddler was big. Iron Circus comes because they were they were doing, doing porn Kickstarters. Well, this is interesting too because Spike Trotman says that there's no money in comics. However, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with that uh, because there are people who are making hundreds of thousands, even people who are just YouTubers that have gone to Indiegogo and are you know I'm thinking like that umbrella guy. He's he's never done comics before. He's done two two six figure campaigns. Yeah. You know, but they can't stand it. No, they can't. And, so, you know, here's the thing, too. So they're not telling you is some people, you know, it doesn't matter if they make a lot of money because they're married to people who do. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, there's that. That's a whole nother video. We could mm -hmm. talk about all the comics that are propped up by spouses with good jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but at least, you know, I will give Trotman that. She comes out and says there's no there's no money in comics, but there should be. Uh, there was at one point in time doing comics made you a millionaire. Yeah. You know? Uh, let's see, White Ash, I am not familiar with. The people that they're using, though, are not mainstream. Uh, Brian Polito, yeah, he's, again, he's got a following from the 90s. Lady Death was a huge right. deal Right, these in are 90s. people who had a following from years ago. Right, and... They're um, not getting that much, honestly. You know, and what they're not talking about is she. She came out about the same time as Lady Death, and that's Billy Tucci's. Well, because he's had some some association, I, I would consider him Comics Gate adjacent. He's had some association with Comics Gate. He's made comparable amounts of money, but they're not going to talk about that. I just, I just, I'm sorry. I All I keep thinking of is a lot of the webcomic people who existed. And you have to understand, webcomics were looked at as the, the you know, amateur hour of comics. Yes. They were mocked. We have, you know, until they, there was money, then they all wanted to do it. Same with, you know, crowdfunding. But like one of the, one, some of the ones that had the largest Kickstarters ever was like, you know. Or the stick. Well, I think, I think Van Skyver's campaign passed what? that. But, or the stick had like. A million two right, or but something. We're talking that years ago before oh, right, crowdfunding yeah. was like really yeah. trusted and well known. So I mean, what they're bringing up as examples, you know, they're, and overall, comparatively speaking, they aren't. They're okay. They're doing okay, but they're not bringing the boom like they're they're claiming they are. No, but um, you know, even Indiegogo's by non comic skate creators like uh, Gabriel Piccolo, Icarus in the Sun did almost six hundred thousand dollars, but they never mentioned that. Now his following mostly comes from Tumblr and Instagram. But uh, they didn't mention that because, again, now they're trying to, like, associate Indiegogo as as the platform of hate, even though there are lots of creators on there making money. I know um, Stand Still, Stay Silent made pretty good money over mm -hmm. there, too, because I think where she was at, she wasn't allowed to use Kickstarter, so she, she used Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Yes. So Indiegogo was around doing comics campaigns before Kickstarter, but um, what pushed everybody over to Indiegogo because that's where all the action is right now was simply because of jawbreakers. Well, I mean, honestly, the the being around crowdfunding since the early days and web comics and stuff, people kind of didn't trust Indiegogo as much. I think that they didn't feel like a secure there. Plus, the good thing about Indiegogo was that you could do it all or you could do you know a two campaigns. You could do all or nothing, which is what Kickstarter did, or you could just take what you get and move forward. So a lot of people were afraid they wouldn't get enough mm. on Indiegogo, so they didn't do it, or they afraid it wasn't as recognized as Kickstarter, so they didn't do it. There was reasons people like looked at Indiegogo as the the lesser option. Yeah. Um, for years until these Kickstarters started making all kinds of money, or well, Indiegogos started making all kinds of money because Richard Meyer wasn't allowed on Kickstarter mm -hmm. because they were trying to gatekeep and probably. People with connections to the mainstream comic book industry kept them out because not because the comic was bad. It looks like a, a PG-13 90s G.I. Joe comic, but because they didn't like his YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. But now we've got Kelly Sue DeConnick uh, calling for an end to gatekeepers. You see what's going on here? Because this is the one thing that, that Comicsgate has been doing for a while is like, we're going to do an end run around the gatekeepers. Uh, we're going to crowdfund. Now, all of a sudden, we've got the mainstream media outlets and and uh, mainstream comic book creators be who have acted like gatekeepers in the past, all being like, yeah, it's our idea. It's our idea. We're, we're gonna get rid of the gatekeepers. No, it's not your idea. And then she admits also that she's a gatekeeper herself. She admits it. She is, of course she is. They want the illusion of getting rid of gatekeepers Why they themselves stay as the gatekeepers. And this is what happened to Kickstarter. Kickstarter used to be an option for everybody to get their comics projects done. But then what happened was when it became successful and the comic book industry needed to rely on crowdfunding to pad its numbers, its annual revenue, and they started to look at uh, crowdfunding as being part of that pie, they they installed their own people in over there. They, they had people come in that were already part of the comic book uh, system. 
you know, whether you want to call it a, a whisper network or not, they were already part of the system. They got in and they started gatekeeping comics over there on Kickstarter mm -hmm. too. I'm afraid it's going to happen at Indiegogo at some point because the money's too good, but I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I love it. Now it's their idea. Oh yeah. It's mm -hmm. their idea. Um, Just like going to indie and crowdfunding is now their idea too, according to Bleeding Cool, even though everybody else has been doing it for years. And you mock them and you won't cover the ones who've done a really good job. Yeah, they refuse. They refuse to cover. And we're going to talk about this whole thing. This is this is this is the kind of like just completely insane how this has blown up in the last two weeks since well, the. It's been about a month, I think, since the first one. Has it been about a month? month? Yeah. I don't have a concept of time. No, you don't. It really doesn't. It's annoying. Anyways. But, but we have we have established comics creators attacking Art T Bear on Twitter now. Uh, Fabian Nicieza, we've got Dan Panosian. These are people that he was actually friends with for years. Well, we had friends that we didn't even do anything, but because we got put on a list because we questioned why Marvel sales numbers are bad, not even knowing about Comicsgate, um, people who w won't talk to us anymore. And we had, we never, we met them in person. We've never did anything or said anything bad ever and it didn't matter. And again, people knew Art was talking to or hanging out with Comicsgate people for months. Now, all of a sudden, now all of a sudden they play that card and they're like, did you know Art T-Bear was involved with Comicsgate? Oh, for shame. For shame, Fabian is coming after him. Damn, oh, oh, I love this Fabian guy. Oh, I worked on Webtoon, Outrage on Webtoon. Okay, that's another, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go there for a minute. I don't really effing care. Webtoon, another one that everybody was like, oh, it's amateur hour until the comics, web comics started making money. Then a whole bunch of Marvel and DC people, mostly Marvel actually, suddenly got deals on Webtoons to have yeah. comics on Webtoons. Not other people who have been on the platform for years and had built the whole platform up to make it mean something and matter. Um, they, they, some of them got deals, but it was, it was like, sometimes but they just get to waltz in with a, a, a whole and by deals i mean they either got paid or they got promoted or they got some special treatment um as pros and apparently he's one of them well i, I read his comic and it's basically about uh it's basically about uh, twitter outrage and um how how it's right to go take down uh right wingers via outrage but you know, it's so fine it's, to take down anyone via outrage it's a very very political comic i got a half i wouldn't it. read it i would just be like but my, my point is once again there's a associated with webtoon surprise now we'll get a call from webtoon again or an email oh, for god last sake. time we did yeah well i don't think they're gonna be doing it because honestly look at all the look at all the stuff they're picking up for animation projects it's all uh, it's all Korean yeah. stuff and Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis got Freak Angels picked up, but now Warren Ellis is canceled. But you too. know what I'm saying? It's funny because at the end of the day, people want anime, they want yeah. manga, and that's the stuff that's getting picked up. Mm -hmm. So you guys threw one after Marvel and everybody else and gave them special treatment, and then they don't, and that's not even what gets picked up when people are interested in it. That's not even what does the best on this platform. A lot of these comics, they hit the numbers, so you wouldn't see that they weren't getting much traffic. Yeah. So, I mean, we're going to talk about this because this, this cancer. Uh, this cancer issue is is now this week's outrage. yeah yeah I missed this whole thing okay so. So you told me but did you tell did you talk about it on here yet? I did not talk okay, about so it go ahead here. explain it for those who don't know so apparently apparently what happened as I understand it was there was a clip from an old live stream an old uh, EVS live stream which I don't watch them because they go on for like six hours. I here and there I might catch a I don't bit. have time to watch I, yeah I, but we're too busy making stuff like I don't really have time but I did watch the the clip in question and they were making fun of uh, Mags Visagio's ovarian cancer uh, which was supposed to be a joke yeah but I mean I have to admit that is, I, that was a poor taste it really wasn't something you should have said but you know yeah yeah because that was the joke and also and also Tess Fowler, who is part of the Whisper Network, who has been constantly anti-Comicsgate for like years, uh, has cancer and that's coming up but now. That, but it wasn't about her. Well, as, okay, so. I'm confused. So what happened was they made comments, I guess, or at least EVS made comments about uh, kind of being karma that Tess Fowler is also like, why are you, if you're so sick, why are you spending all your time attacking us on Twitter and not taking okay, care of yourself? But here's the thing, and I'm going to say this, and I'm sorry, but it's it, that's just a sh shitty thing, you know. If someone has cancer, that's not something to say, oh, karma, because you're sick. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't think that was okay. I mean, you can hate me if you want. I don't care. Um, I don't like people, and I think that these people say a lot of things they shouldn't say, and they do a lot of things I don't agree with, and they and they're shitty people a lot of times. But even if they're, they're crappy people, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to make that comment i mean 
Well, he can say what he wants on his thing. Right. But I'm just saying, I, I think that there are lines that, you know, you shouldn't cross. And even if they cross it on you, you need to be better. And I just think that that, that was like saying it's karma that they get sick isn't, isn't okay. In so, my opinion. So we're going to, we're, we'll talk again. This is why. That doesn't excuse their behavior. Though, why do we, yeah. And this is where it's, God, this is where it gets complicated because comics gate initially was a reaction to the insanity of the professional comic book industry. An understandable reaction. Right. But now that one offhand remark has become a rallying point. Well, they're looking, they're coming through at whatever to find trying something. Trying to find something to be like, look, look, they're a hate group because they said this. Because they're trying desperately to say that they should, they're should. they labeled as a hate group. Um, now, you know, Antifa is not considered a group, they said, but the Comics Gate somehow meets all the criteria, even though it's never been identified as such, yeah. because they said so. So, and again, I think all of this, all of this goes back to the Whisper Network because now it's like, it's it's clear, I think it's becoming clear to a lot of these pros that it's, it's basically do or die at this point, because there's a very good chance that a lot of these publishers are not gonna survive the pandemic. Um, there's a very good chance that Disney could at some point in the very near future, pull the plug on Marvel as a comic book publisher, uh, that DC could be sold off because AT&T is looking for stuff to sell off. Anyway, Art T-Bear was there. He was on that live stream. I, I don't know what his reaction was, but he came out and said, well, his wife has cancer, so it's not something he would ever make a joke about. Well, this is actually interesting. What he said was actually pretty well done. He said, it's clear you don't like comic skaters. Now, I know you've been waiting for an opportunity to come at me based on who I hang out with. I have heard and seen you do worse things in my presence before, but I keep that to myself because you are a friend and friends don't hurt one another. But it's very hypocritical to believe that you're better than me or anyone and play more arbitrator. You had to dig until you thought you found something that you could try to hurt me with. You're wrong. I would not laugh about anyone having cancer. So basically, they, I think Art did a really good job of calling it out. Basically, I've seen you do worse, say worse. I don't tell anybody you say it. And then as soon as you you have to go dig for something to, to, to try to to try to make me take your side, to try to force me into doing what you want. Because it would be a shame if I couldn't be your friend anymore if you don't side with me. This is basically a bunch of people freaking out, trying not to be canceled themselves. And a lot of people who throw stones first, I believe have skeletons in their own well, closet. I've seen people uh, that have not talked to us because they were supposed to be so bad. We've heard them say things that were really shitty. Oh yeah. I've heard, I mean, one person I know who was like the first one to like, you know, I can't talk to you because I don't, I don't want to be surrounded with negativity would go on and on about how they would leverage things and how they, you know, would, would they would say things about how everything's a business and they go online and be like, Oh, let me help you be help yourselves and try to make it like a kumbaya. But behind the channel, back channel, they would be like, it's all a business that they can't understand that they deserve what they get kind of thing. And, yeah. but then uh, public persona and, and, per, and real persona are two different things. And we never said anything. We never called them out. No. But they were like first ones to unfollow us because of negativity. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, it's they're trying to to deflect. And, and here, look, because the Whisper Network came out, we can see how shitty some of these people are in private. And now they're just going to try to find every... Again, this, I, I as I understand it, this stream was months old. They were just looking for something. I, I, I never saw it. But this reminds me of the Vic Bignana thing too. Like, um, you know, they were going to cancel him because of stuff that happened at con and bad behavior at cons. But the stuff they were describing, we've been guests at the anime, anime cons and the voice actors, a lot of them behave this way. Heck, some of the, the attendees behaved in the way they were accusing. And it was like, well, how come it's okay for them to do it? I'm not, it was never okay no matter who it was. Right. But how come, it, you know, it, they get a pass, but then he is the only one that's being called out for it. That's what I was mad about. I'm like, I've seen them all act this way. The comic book industry has been a dumpster fire for years. I mean, it really has. It's just, what, what's going on now is the facade is, is being dropped. And we're starting to see that a lot of people working in the industry are conspiring against their, their peers. They're defaming their peers. Uh, it's every rap for themselves. I mean, when you have an industry full of underpaid freelancers who are terrified that they're gonna get canceled, that they're gonna get gone, yeah, and a lot of these people are just using it as a platform for activism, and they're seeing the company sort of, you know, backpedal on that. There's a lot of fear. And this is, at this point, what I'm seeing is actually, regardless of whether or not somebody made a, a crass joke, what I'm seeing at this point is everybody, it's a feeding frenzy. They're all trying to feed their friends to the beast to avoid getting eaten themselves. Right. And, and in the end, you're all gonna get eaten. Cause you're, you're all gonna get eaten. It's, it's the comic book industry as we knew it is dying. It's dead, it's done. And you can say that it's, it's simply because you're trying to be the moral authority, but we know 
it's it's rooted in fear. It is. This we, is rooted this is in fear. Our first videos when we started YouTube, that's what we said then too. This is all based on fear. We said it back yeah. then, and it's just as true now. And I'm not saying not to to hold people accountable uh, if they do say shitty things, but you, you're going to be hard pressed to call people out in their own shitty behavior when you're participating in or condoning shitty, uh, behavior. shitty behavior that might even be worse than what you're right. calling out. Those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And there's a reason that saying exists. So this is this is the thing. Um, now we're pulling celebrities in. Patton Oswalt. Does anybody even care? He has a lot to say, but does anybody even really care? No, because uh, I'm going to tell you, I, he has a beef with Comicsgate, I think, because I, I believe people pointed out that his own comics campaign only got only got Wait, he made comics yeah he made why i don't know thirty seven thousand dollars from Patton oswalt with supposedly millions of twitter followers yes but he's calling it out you know an umbrella guy uh youtuber umbrella guy pointed out that Patton oswalt for being so offended so offended about that uh, uh cancer cancer joke made several cancer jokes himself that were very off color so in the obituaries, no one ever dies of cancer. People always give in after a valiant battle with cancer. This is coming from Patton Oswalt. Or they throw in the towel after a courageous fight, which statistically that can't be possible. Um, there had to be have been a couple of cowardly ordeals in there, he said, assuming that's Patton Oswalt. You know what I mean? Like Bob Smith died today after a craven, cowardly ordeal with cancer, during which he wished the disease on his family and friends and attempted a pact with Satan. It's coming from Patton Oswalt. Ann Coulter died of prostate cancer in 2002. Her Twitter account's a sentient emo skeleton with a swatch of eyelid skin stretched out over it. Patton Oswalt. Uh, you're shielding your family's sleeves behind kids with cancer. Um, because he doesn't like Trump. I can't make a Michael Douglas that thing throat cancer joke till I can link it to the star chamber. I need a challenge. Cancer seems to be one of his favorite punchlines. It does. Uh, so again, we have people throwing throwing shade now tess fowler uh well here we're pulling scott mcleod into it too internet feuds can be confusing for those not following closely myself included but if any of you out there are still confused about why comics gay is considered a hate group this one tweet and video should be all you need to make up your mind are we going to go back to Patton oswalt's uh multiple cancer jokes uh, we can start pulling up a bunch of tweets probably from mcleod and fowler too to show about what how hateful behavior can be just because you're on one side if you say things that it's hateful it doesn't matter what side you're on it's still hateful so tess fowler yeah they started gofundme to pay for her cancer treatment and you know what's interesting is tess fowler supposedly and this i've heard this for years she supposedly took uh money from a guy who had cancer who wanted to write a children's book for his family before he died. He did die already. And as I understand it, uh, she never followed through with it. They had to to, to write or produce a uh, change.org petition about it. And she had it taken down. And it's been kind of, it's gone down the memory well, hole. Well, I hope that's not true. Because that I is, that's really low. I hope it's not true. Uh, but that's what we're talking about here. You know, it's very easy to throw stones, right? Uh, but what brought comics gate about in the first place again regardless of whether or not you agree with what is is being said by individuals was the fact that the comic book industry was full of a bunch of shitty people uh that there were whisper networks going on that there was collusion behind the scenes to keep certain kinds of people out of the industry um those sentiments i can get on board with because we've known about it we've seen it ourselves yeah. for years that's just how comics is and it had the mask ripped off and it doesn't like it now we're facing the sunlight they're vampires and the sunlight's coming out and and the comic book industry is going to be decimated and they're freaking the hell out right but if you're going to take something from months ago i'm assuming it was months ago yeah if you're taking something a comment and you're going all over the internet with it from something said months ago you better be prepared for everything you've said months ago to be used against you as well and here's the easiest thing to do don't say things like that just don't you know don't make jokes about cancer whether you're pat oswald or cecil or whomever don't make just don't make jokes about that kind of stuff because it's not cool but you know don't you, everybody has skeletons in their claws i don't care who you are and no. you, you sit there and talk about how shitty somebody else is. If you yourself have done the same behavior, you're better just keep your mouth shut because you know it's going to come out after you. Because it's going to come out like Pat Oswald did with that umbrella guy. Said a lot of shitty things um, at throwing stones when people saying crappy things. And I'm just, you know, just don't say crappy things. I think what, what needs, I mean, one, that the cancel culture has to end. And I get expelling people or whatever if they're legitimately shitty people. But this is, this is 
basically become survivor at this point it's people making packs and alliances on the island to try to win but you know there can only be one survivor at so, the end of the day it's a tiny island it's a get tiny off the island. island get on your boats and go to the much bigger island down the way take over that be the king of that island queen of that island yeah i mean uh, it's Let them just, fight over that one. Well, that's, yeah, that's it. The comic book industry is imploding and comic skaters are pointing out how badly the comic book industry has failed and continues to fail and they're freaking out. But again, you're not seeing like all the energy it takes to constantly, we've got Pat Zercher on here from DC, just constantly, you know, making, sounds to me like a... Think of how productive you could be. Yeah, I mean, anyone in comic skate hoping to draw comics as a career is choosing a strange way to go about it. Yeah, they're alienating, actually making money. Yeah, alienating themselves from 95% of comics publishers. To me, that sounds like there's already collusion behind the scenes. If you associate in any way with Comicsgate, all the people in the Whisper Networks are going to make sure that you're not you're not invited. Fine, just to start new comics out. publishers. You're not and allowed you know to do what? that. Well, yeah, you can. Start new comics publishers because most of these are going to go under in the next couple of years anyway. They know that. That's why they're freaking out. So now they want to. They want to be the ones who are like, "Look at us. We, you know, we advocated for no gatekeeping in comics. We advocated for crowdfunding. We're going to change after the, story. the fact. After the fact. Doesn't make it true just because you say it. Like my mom always said, and I said it before. Just because I went to, the, I say I went to the planet Melmac doesn't make it true. You know, just because you say that you did this doesn't make it true. And there's enough of a paper trail to prove you're full of it. Yeah, it's it's just it's sad. it's sad. We're watching the death throes of the comic book industry. We're watching people eat each other, and you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, do, do, would you want to work with people that will toss you under the wheels of the bus mm -hmm. at the first opportunity to make sure that they get to to keep their gig in comics and their place in comics, uh, but you're you're ousted for nebulous idiotic reasons well all i keep thinking of is that that that's the analogy you used the other day where you have the person on the street and you have a choice who you're going to work with the person on the street that's kind of like you know hey let's have a discussion um we might disagree but you know what we'll have a discussion about it and, and you know we'll, we'll try to you know keep it light but we'll maybe put some of our different opinions in the work but we'll you know we'll just work together i don't always agree with you 100 percent. you don't always agree with me 100 percent. but you know hey we'll just do the best we can to put some good stuff out there or the person on the corner just yelling at everybody that comes up at you going patriarchy 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 who do you think people are going to work with who do you think they're going to buy from yeah you're doing nothing but creating your own demise is what you're doing. If, As a friendly advice, I'm telling you. If Comics Gate is eating your lunch, it's it's because you chased those people away. You started serving food they didn't like. And a lot of people are backing Comics Gate books just to be like, you know, fuck you people. You're not going to tell me what I can think, mm -hmm. what I can do, and continually, you know, attack people on social media or whatever. Um, the comic book industry, I mean, if you, if you consider Comics Gate... A super villain then it's the joker and you're the ones who dropped him into the the vat of acid and turned him into create your own enemy you create your own enemy i mean that's that's kind of where i'm like i don't know what to tell you because you made comic skate comic skate was a reaction to the nonsense the bullshit the gatekeeping the backbiting the unprofessional behavior that that was increasing in the comic book industry and now now uh, you guys want to be like, you know, now they're they're a hate group. Well, they're labeling people who aren't in comics gate, comics gate. Basically, if you don't agree with them, you're comics gate. Yeah, anybody. So, I mean, we got we got called comics gate because we were calling out this shit in the comic book industry. I'm like, I, I, so, I don't give a somehow shit. Somehow we're on the gamer gate list. We weren't even there. For we that. weren't even there for gamer gate. But comics, look, I'm sorry, uh, and it sounds cold, but the comic book industry did this to themselves. And I'm, again, I don't agree with everything that everybody says, but the sentiment that you need to to build a life raft and get the hell out of the comic book industry and that there are major problems in the comic book industry and that it's a gate kept locked down business that's shrinking because they keep keeping every, they keep everybody out they don't approve of. Uh, yeah, you I get agree left, with what you get to what you get with who's left over. Pretty Whether much. They have the skill or not to do it doesn't matter. Well, your skills are relevant. You're paying thirty five thousand dollars a year in Manhattan to be an editor at Marvel. You're going to get. Yeah, you're going to get what you pay for. Yeah. And know? they're like, well, minorities are represented. Well, maybe they're just too smart to not work for that little bit of pittance of crap. Yeah, right? maybe, maybe it's not because they're being kept out. Maybe it's because they're not that dumb. 
that that's possible so it's just it's it's all falling apart and you know now we've got everybody attacking marvel because of the diversity thing and the whole thing is we've got people like this that are never happy they're never satisfied with anything they're gonna rip it apart from the inside comic skate doesn't have to lift a finger they're just looking for a scapegoat at this point i mean are you are these people gonna if the comic book industry implodes are they gonna blame comic skate for that yes because you keep saying comic skate's very small and it doesn't matter but you can't stop giving it attention same with that same with the star wars oh the vocal minority they they don't they're not hurting star wars it's not because you know we're hemorrhaging money and losing because we did crappy things it's because that little group a uh, little group can't do damage like that no. so uh, and I think there's more people that agree than disagree at this point. I'm starting to think that. I don't know. Uh, so we're going to wrap this one up. Yep, please do. <laughs> please this is subscribe. Too long. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.